Our host for today's ceremony is the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Christine E. Wormuth. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem performed by Staff Sergeant Adam Struby from the United States Army Chorus and the invocation delivered by the Army Chief of Chaplains, Chaplain Major General William Green, Jr. <coughs> <coughs> Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Good afternoon. Please bow with me as I ask God's blessings upon this special occasion. Let us pray. Almighty and ever faithful God, we come before you with grateful hearts, acknowledging your goodness that guides us each day. You fill our lives with good things, and today we celebrate your goodness in the life and career of Ms. Cassandra Nolan Walker truly a career of a lifetime. Heavenly Father, we thank you for her decades of remarkable service and her commitment as an invaluable member of the Army Protocol Team. You have blessed her with wisdom, patience, and strength. And with her tireless efforts, she has uplifted those around her both honored and advanced the strategic mission of our great army with professionalism and grace. As Ms. Nolan Walker embarks on a new chapter of life, we ask your abundant blessings on her family and upon her. May she find joy in the fruits of her labor and peace in the journey of ahead. And now, Lord, we lift up all of our Army family, retired and those are currently that are currently serving, all soldiers and leaders, and all members of the Army family. Continue to empower and sustain us all so that we might continue to serve our nation with honor as Miss Nolan Walker has done. And Heavenly Father, bless this land we love and keep us shining bright as a light of liberty through all things that we might encounter or experience. This will defend. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Warmouth. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here on what is really a bittersweet day, uh, certainly for me, but as I look out, I think for a number of people in the audience who've had the wonderful privilege of working with Cassandra. Um, 
delighted to have you all here to say farewell to her as she retires after a long and distinguished career in the Army. I want to offer a very special welcome to her family, close friends, and all of her fans who's come from out of town to celebrate her remarkable career, especially Cassandra's children and grandchildren. We have Jazz and his family from North Carolina, Lauren and her family from Mississippi, and Tracy and her family who live right here in the DC area. I know it means a lot to Cassandra and Rob that you all are here today. I also want to welcome the many distinguished guests that I see in the audience. Uh, I see several retired four stars and spouses. I think we have Holly Petraeus here, Linda Villa. I see uh, Ambassador Westfall, one of our great undersecretaries. Uh, I think we also have Anne LeMay and Chief DC. Uh, and I also see Mrs. Kimberly Weimer. So thank you all again. I think it's a testament to um, the fact that after 43 and a half years in civil service with the Army, Cassandra really is a core part of our Army staff. Since 1980, she has been recognized for her dedication and expertise. She started her career as a civil servant in the office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel, DESPER, as we used to call it, and 12 years later, she moved to Army Protocol. She has been the heart and soul of Army Protocol ever since. There, Cassandra started as a secretary and worked her way up to where she is today, serving as our Army Protocol Conference Team Chief and Special Events Coordinator for all Chief of Staff of the Army and Secretary of the Army events. So in 32 years since then, she has supported, wait for it, 11 Secretaries of the Army, six Acting Secretaries of the Army, and 10 Chiefs of Staff of the Army. That is 32 years of supporting hundreds of promotion ceremonies, luncheons, special events, funerals for general officers, engagements with foreign counterparts, and retirement ceremonies like this one. I was talking with Cassandra backstage, if you will, and she was saying it's a little odd to be sort of the, the object of one of these events rather than the person planning it. <laughs> a strange feeling. But more than uh, all of the many important ceremonies that Cassandra has organized over the years, her biggest contribution to the Army has been her service as a mentor, an educator, and, a, and an exemplar of all of our protocol policies and procedures. As the most senior protocol officer inside the Army, Cassandra's influence on protocol officers all around the country and around the world has really been immeasurable. As she heads into this well-earned retirement, she leaves behind a whole legacy, a generation really, of Army protocol officers who learned what right looks like from Cassandra. She has also supported dozens of my engagements over the last few years. And I never had to worry about uh, what was happening behind the scenes because I know that Cassandra's personal army of protocol officers was going to make sure that everything went smoothly. In many ways, the protocol office really maintains and strengthens the Army's relationship with the public and with other countries. And it takes a lot of work to ensure that the smallest details are taken care of. One poorly chosen gift can leave a bad impression. Or a well-chosen song performed in the native language of the country can really seal the bond between our armies. So Cassandra, I want to say thank you for your attention to those kinds of details over many, many years. And thank you also for cultivating such an extraordinarily professional protocol operation for the Army. On a personal note, one of my favorite engagements every year is, of course, the Army-Navy football game. And part of what makes it special is that every year I've been there, Cassandra has been my personal escort officer. And it's always a highlight of the day for me, for Cassandra and I to sort of compare our Army spirit fashion. Um, and we usually take a selfie on the field as well. So Cassandra, I'm really going to miss seeing you there this year uh, as we absolutely cheer our way to another Army win. Ooh. 
<laughs> but I know that after all these years, you're looking forward to being able to spend more time with Rob and your whole family. Rob has been... <laughs> Rob has been a huge supporter, as all of you know, uh, throughout Cassandra's career, and next month they're going to celebrate their 19th wedding anniversary. <laughs> One thing I didn't know about Rob and Cassandra is that they've actually known each other since junior high, but they didn't start dating until she was working at the Pentagon, and apparently, it was a relationship that began on the mall entrance steps. <laughs> so Rob, thank you so much. <laughs> Clearly there's a whole story there. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much for the love and support you've given to Cassandra and for letting me borrow her for one football game a year. Uh, I know she would much rather be spending it with you. And Rob and Cassandra don't just have each other, they have a whole uh, wonderful family as well. And it's terrific to see and to be able to meet your adult children and some of the grandchildren, and apparently there's another grandchild on the way, which is a wonderful, uh, wonderful bit of news. And I know that six grandchildren have got to keep you busy. But I think the, the love that you have for your children and grandchildren is also a reflection of the love that your parents have for you. And I was able to meet Cassandra's father today, Mr. Stephen Nolan, who's here. And I have a feeling that you're probably the proudest person in the room, um, not just of Cassandra and all that she's achieved, but who she is as a person, as a mother, and as a grandchildren, a grandmother, uh, excuse me. Uh, and while Cassandra lost her mom, Shirley, this year, I know she is with you in spirit today also, Cassandra, and is a big part of everything you've done and who you are. So to all the extended family and friends who are here today, thank you so much for being here and being an important part of Cassandra's life, helping her through the tough times, celebrating the good times, and being here today to share this very significant milestone retiring after 43 years plus in uh, service of the Army. Cassandra, I want to say to you on behalf of all of the former secretaries of the Army and Army leaders that you've supported over the years, thank you so much for a job well done. We're going to miss you, um, but you have earned this retirement, and I wish you and Rob all the very best in this next exciting chapter. Congratulations. <laughs> Ms. Nolan Walker and Mr. Walker, please join Secretary Warmoth in front of the flags. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated during the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The Superior Civilian Service Medal is awarded to Ms. Cassandra Y. Nolan Walker for exceptional civilian service while serving as a Supervisory Senior Protocol Specialist, Army Protocol Directorate, Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army from July 2018 to September 2024. Ms. Nolan Walker demonstrated exceptional technical expertise for more than 1,000 events hosted by Army senior leadership, culminating her illustrious 32 years in Army protocol. Her exceptional ability to coordinate, plan, and execute ceremonies, special events, and conferences at the highest levels of our Army has earned her the respect and admiration of our Army leaders. Ms. Nolan Walker's accomplishments are in keeping with the highest traditions of civilian service and reflect great credit upon her, the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army, and the Department of the Army. Signed, Laura A. Potter, Lieutenant General, United States Army, Director of the Army Staff.
The Department of the Army Certificate of Retirement is awarded to Ms. Cassandra Y. Nolan Walker for exceptionally outstanding and dedicated service during 43 years of federal service, culminating as the Supervisory Senior Protocol Specialist for the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army, Director of the Army Staff. Cassandra's flawless and untiring support has served this nation with distinction and her consistent professionalism and commitment to each mission task have greatly benefited the Army, soldiers, and their families. Her dedicated and faithful service reflects great credit upon herself, the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army, and the Department of the Army. Signed, Laura A. Potter, Director of the Army Staff. A certificate of appreciation is awarded to Mr. Robert Walker on the occasion of the retirement of his wife from active federal service as the Protocol Directorate Supervisory Senior Protocol Specialist for the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army. Mr. Walker has earned grateful appreciation for his own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. His unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible his wife's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Laura A. Potter, Director of the Army Staff. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Walker. Secretary Warmoth is presenting Miss Nolan Walker with framed star notes with coins from the Army senior leaders. Secretary Warmoth will now be presenting Miss Nolan Walker with a shadow box with a United States flag that was flown over the Pentagon in honor of her 43 years of federal service. Thank you, Secretary Warmoth and Ms. Nolan Walker. At this time, Ms. Regina Hunter will perform a special musical tribute in honor of Ms. Nolan Walker. If I can help somebody as I travel along, then my living shall not be in vain. And if I can show just want somebody that they're going, they're going wrong, then my living shall not, it won't be in vain. And if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, then my living shall not, it just won't be in vain. My living shall not be in vain, oh, my living shall not be in vain, because I have helped somebody as I traveled 
along. And right now I know that my living has not been in vain. Miss Nolan Walker, we want you to know that your living has not been in vain. We showed up to let you know that your living has not been in vain. You have helped so many somebodies, to include me, <laughs> as I travel, as you traveled along, through all your heartaches, through all your disappointment, you still have somebody as you travel, travel along. We just want you to know today that you have helped so many somebody. As you traveled, as you traveled along, and we love you because you are a servant of the Most High God. Love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Cassandra Y. Nolan Walker. Good afternoon, all. First and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior for this day. He has brought me this far, and he promises never to leave me. Today I stand before you, as many have called me, Miss Nolan. Miss Walker, Miss Nolan Walker, Cassandra, Cassie, Sandy, Angel, and Miss Protocol. <laughs> I would rather stand here before you, providing you with directions like, ma'am, sir, right this way. Excuse me. Hey, Rob, can you bring my glasses? Because I can't see. <laughs> my glasses, I can't see. I have to pause. apologize all, but the words were running together. <laughs> I'll start from here. I would rather stand before you, providing directions like, ma'am, sir, right this way. Or maybe, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? I would have greeted you at that door today with a big smile and said, hello, follow me. You're seated in the VIP section right up front. But today, that's me. After 32 and a half years of being in protocol, it's my day. I promise not to be long. Please bear with me. I might get a little emotional, as you can see. But I'll start out with, I would like to, like to thank the United States Army Band member who sung the national anthem for me today. And shortly he'll sing the Army song. 
The Army Band has always been, has always provided the best patriotic music during our events. I'll thank you again. Chaplain Green, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to provide the invocation for me. Thank you so much. I would like for you to know that I've said the Lord's Prayer all day and all night to get me through this, like I've done for all of my events. Ma'am, Gigi Hunter, you sang that song one morning, we were having prayer, and it sounds so good, it sounds better today than it did that morning that you sang it. I appreciate you singing the song today. Thank you, my prayer warrior. A huge thanks to Madam Secretary for hosting my ceremony and for all your caring ways leading this Army institution. We're all so proud of you, ma'am. Just like me and so many others, we admire your courage, we admire your wisdom, and I just admire you. I would like to give you some flowers, ma'am. I know we don't to do this. We're not supposed to, but it's my day. <laughs> to have a few retired four-star general officers, former political appointees, and other distinguished guests here in the audience today. General and Mrs. Eric Kaysensecki, Ambassador and Mrs. Joe Westfall, General Reimer, Mrs. Petraeus, the Honorable Joe Reeder, Mrs. Bai, General and Mrs. Nakasoni, Ms. LeMay, Ms. Weimer, and Chief Dixon Carter. Thank you all for coming. It meant so much to me for you to be here. There are several other general officers that I've known over the years when they were captains, majors, lieutenant colonels, colonels, and they've grown into the ranks of one, two, and three, four stars. It has been great watching you grow into our Army senior leaders. I would also like to acknowledge our chief of staff of the Army who couldn't be here today, Randy George. I've known him since he was an executive officer to the vice chief of staff of the Army several years ago. It was great working alongside him. He's a true friend. A special shout out to a couple of my buddies, Xavier Brunson, who was just confirmed to be a four star, Johnny Davis, Kevin Admiral, Matt McFarland, Pat Work, all of them that couldn't be here today due to scheduling conflicts. To Tony Hale, Trevor Breitenkamp, Laura Potter, ma'am, that are in the audience, just a few of you all. I work with, I've watched you grow, it's just so amazing. I can't see you, General Potter, but I've known General Potter, she was a Lieutenant Colonel, never changed. Always there for you, always wanted to help. 
just a, I'll move on because I'm gonna get stuck here. As I climbed the ladders of success, I learned the Army protocol, you had to build relationships. Not only to build relationships, you had to meet some, have some associates. And with all of those people, you could get things done. You could pick up the phone and they would be there to help you along the way. So I would like to thank the many teams that have helped Cassandra along the way. Team Executive Motor Pool, Charlie Watson and crew, Team Public Affairs, Army Television, Leroy Council, my photographer, Joe Billups, Marvin Hurston, Team Army Publications and Graphics, Team OCLL, Team MDW Ceremonies and Special Events, and the Old Guard. Gary Hardy, if you're out there, you rock, my friend. Team of the President of the United States, Team SecDef, Team Secret Service, Team Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Team CID and Personal Security, Team USAMA, Team G357, Team G1, Samantha Youngblood, Army Four Star Command Teams, Team Executive Dining Facility, Don Humbard and crew. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Team ECC, Team SEC Army Conference Room, Woody and Team, Team Executive Communications, Team GOMO, Kelly, Jay, Matt, Jason, and the NCOs, Team Protocols at the Army Installations and our Army, excuse me, and our sister services. A special thanks to the front offices of the Secretary of the Army, Sam, Vicki, Alex, Dan, Master Sergeant Ramey, and the NCOs, the Chief of Staff of the Army's office, Michelle, Chief Hilliard, Ashley, CCC, CCG Group, the past chiefs, DC, and Chief Nettles, and the NCOs, the Undersecretary of the Army's office, the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army's office, the Director of the Army Staff, the Administrative Assistant to the Secretary of the Army, the Office of the Sergeant Major of the Army, Dr. Sorrell and the NCOs, the Office of the Vice Director of the Army Staff Resource Management Office, Heather and Mike. All of you guys were there for me to provide you with the, my Army protocol expertise for the front office for so many years. Thank you for getting the many read aheads and pertinent information in front of our bosses in a timely manner. Now to the teams who I rolled my sleeves up with and traveled across the country and throughout the 50 states to ensure our senior leaders had the best weather it was with the corporate leaders, foreign dignitaries, industry leaders, and the office of the president. We conducted strategic planning and courses of actions for successful events for our top Army leaders and DOD. Special thanks to Cheryl, Roger, Deborah, and Angie, the Secretary of the Army Civilian Aid Office. We were a dynamic team. Thank you all for letting me be a part of the Castle family for so many years. To our contracting team at Bowhead Incorporated, Kim, Lori, Michelle, Raj, and Janetta. We put in some long hours and our hard work always paid off at the end. Thanks for being there for me. If you're in the audience today, Mr. Darrell Green, can you please stand up? This guy, this guy and I have known each other for over 31 years. We have the longest tenure in the office of the Chief of Staff of the Army's office. He and I have worked on conferences 
for many, many years. Daryl, thanks for all your assistance. I couldn't have done it without you, buddy. <laughs> to the headquarters department of the Army protocol team, past and present, you have been my family, away from my actual family, for, for more than 32 and a half years. We have shared weddings, births, deaths, PCSs, retirements, and so much more. We work hard, we work long hours, we work holidays, and people don't realize that we work in a zero tolerance workforce. People always ask me, Cassandra, you still in the Army protocol? <laughs> and I would say yes, and they would say, you must really like it. And I would say no. I really love it. Protocol is a, is a skill, it's a craft. You have to have a true love for people and etiquette for all walks of life. And I can tell you, we all do. Thanks to the members of my team, especially those that I supervised over the years, Mark, Luis, Staff Sergeant Duncan, Dexter Edmonds, Elizabeth, Regina, Juan, Tony, Dexter Alperberry. I want to give Dexter Alperberry a special thanks for planning my ceremony and who I've cloned to step in my place. In my absence, if I'm away, Dexter can step right in and do the job. Dex, Thanks so much, buddy. To the past directors of Army Protocol, Linda Jacobs, Heidi Hulse, Arlene York, excuse me, Dawson, thanks for trusting me to go out and represent our office. To my current director, Michelle Fry, Thanks for your friendship, leadership, and trust in me. You allowed me to use my sound judgment when it came to my events. You always gave me the most challenging events, and I always took care of them with no issues. When I wanted to volunteer to assist with the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor in Normandy, France, you said it would be a great experience and you allowed me to leave the Pentagon for about a month. Yes, it was a great experience that I will treasure forever. Michelle, I will miss you dearly. But if you ever need anything, I'm here. <laughs> to my former colleague, and brother in the office, Mr. Greg Dotson. We were supposed to be here on this platform together today. That was our pack. But life changes came along, and you had to retire early. You and I did most of the heavy lifting in the office as supervisors and special events chiefs, providing the blueprints to Army-Navy games, Medal of Honor ceremonies, Army birthday ball, retired four-star funerals. I taught you how to be the guru for the Chief's foreign counterpart visits <laughs> and several other events, to say the least. It always felt good, my brother, when you would introduce me as your mentor and big sister. You and Chris will always be a part of my family and in my heart. Okay, so I'm almost done. I know it's Friday afternoon and you want to get out of here because um, I used to look at my watch too. 
And then I don't want to be the one next week when y'all will be saying, Woo, Cassandra can talk. She stayed on that mic for a long time. And I know you have to get back to the office too, ma'am. Last but not least, and I probably would get a little bit more choked up. I would like to thank my entire family. We love hard, we show up for one another. And they're my little army. My brother used to say, here come the general. <laughs> when, when things need to get done, they put me in charge. Family gatherings, trips, all the cooking, and so much more. I will start with my husband, who the secretary mentioned earlier. I've known my husband since junior high school. And we began our little courtship out there on the mall entrance. He'll say that I tried to give him some M&Ms, but that wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> During our college days, we both were interns in the Army program. But he allowed someone in the Army uniform to convince him to wear the uniform. So, God allowed him to go on his journey and do things, and then he returned home to me. <laughs> Babe, thanks for all the sacrifice you've done for me and our family. When I was sent TDY at any given moment, you held the family down, and I can't thank you enough. To my kids, I am so proud of all of your accomplishments and your career choices. My daughter, both, one went in the Army, my daughter is still in the Air Force. She's coming a little closer to me, not in Mississippi anymore, she'll be in Norfolk, so. And then I got a new grandbaby that I gotta go spoil, so that'll be fine. You've been a major part of this journey. Thanks for allowing me to be the best mom and the best grandma to my beautiful grandkids. I've worked so hard that you all could always have the best there is. To my dad, who is here, he has always taught us and showed us how to work hard. I believe he worked in the corporate arena for about 42 years. So that, I think you showed me enough. I got about a year and a half more than what you had. <laughs> As some of you know, I lost my mom nine months ago. She was a hard worker with many years of experience with working with people before she retired. She was my biggest cheerleader, always boasting about her girls. She would be always so interested in what I did at work and who I met. To my auntie, my mom's twin sister, I love you. To my nieces, My nephews and my other family members. That's my auntie. Keep working hard. Your day will come, and then you'll be able to retire. In closing, Sergeant D, we're going to do this afterwards. <laughs> I'm changing the script. I'm sorry. In closing, I stand before you, a woman from the Petworth and Anacostia parts of Washington, D.C., to the countryside of Southern Maryland. I've gone from the White House to Buckingham Palace, all with the Department of the Army. I walked in the Pentagon 
On 7 December 1980, as a young high school student, and took the oath to become a civil servant with the Department of Defense. I began my journey with the Office of Desper, working on both sides of the arena, military and civilian, for 11 and a half years before moving to the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army Directorate. I am a Pentagon September 11th survivor. I've worked from the Pentagon basement to the third floor. Like the secretary said, I've worked for 11 secretaries, 10 chiefs, General Reimer, and General Shinseki, who are here. And I have supported all of the active duty four-star and retired four-stars for more than three decades. Many have asked, have I ever wore the uniform? And I say, no, not at all. But I can tell you, this institution has trained me and taught me so many things, from firing weapons, physical training, and how to be a great leader, and so much more. I will officially retire on 1 November. I plan to take just a small break and rewire. If I had to walk this walk again in life, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I am so proud to have all of you as part of that little hyphen, you know, you have when you were born and when you pass away, all of you are my hyphen. I want to leave some things for the people that are coming behind me. Always remember to work hard for everything. Don't just let people give you anything. Earn it. Because then you owe them nothing. To the leaders, get out with your teams. Get them motivated. It all depends on you. And one last thing I leave you with today. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Live your life to the fullest. I love you guys. Until we meet paths again, have a blessed day and thanks for coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the Army song led by Staff Sergeant Struby. The words can be found on the back of your program. (coughs) 
March along, sing a song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For where we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. You are invited to congratulate Miss Nolan Walker and her family in the receiving line after they take a group photo. Miss Nolan Walker would like for you to take a cupcake as you exit Conmee Hall.